Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be looking into the different types of classes and accessors. I have covered these before in, well, pretty much every video I do I'll have used them in some way. But the thing is, some people have asked for like a kind of um, summary video. So like a video summarizing all the difference between public, private, protected, uh, partial classes, abstract classes, um, and so on, and inheritance virtual voids, override, just some like a video focused solely on that, not necessarily how to do anything in Unity, just like a coding, uh, C-sharp coding thing, and it should be a short video just based on that. Um, quite a few people have asked for it, so I thought it'd be nice to um, explain what they all mean properly, because obviously I have covered them before across all my videos, but the um, difference is I've quickly mentioned them when I've used them, because, you know, I can't dedicate every video to this, so I've make, made this one video uh, focused on that. So I want to start off by thanking my donators on Patreon. Thanks to Michael, Paul Robinson, Fulborn, and Wesley. If anyone else would like to donate to help out, then the link's in the description below. But apart from that, let's get into it. So we have abstract example. I just called the script that. It doesn't really matter. So this is a class, right? This is how you expect to see a default Unity um, script. Now, I mean, to be honest, you could even cut it out even more. This is basically a start of a script. We're using Unity Engine because we're deriving from mono behavior because that's Unity specific. If you were, if you just had a C-sharp class and you would you know, just go with that. Um, that's just a class in C-sharp. But obviously we're deriving from mono behavior so we can put it on an object in the scene and we can have a void start an update call and so on. So obviously by default, a public class just means it's accessible from other where. Like the different words, all right? So we got, you know, public, uh, private, okay, won't well, let me because I've just wrote like that. Let, let me just write it in like notes um, in comments. So we've got public, um, private, and protected. So that's the first thing to cover. So basically, in terms of, let me just move these around actually. So um, in terms of what they do, so if something's public, it means that one, you can access it from other places, um, and two, you can't Re like, reuse the same name of that thing in the same scope. Now, that might not mean anything to you. So, so let's say, for example, um, I have a function, right? So let, let, for now, let's just say it's a private function. So private um, void, obviously I'll get into this kind of stuff. Um, you know, test one, for example, and um, private void test two, okay? So these are private voids. Now, private here just means that these functions are almost like hidden. They can be used, they can be called from inside of this class, but they cannot be called from other classes. So basically how it works is in this hierarchy of public, protected, private, always go with private if you can, and then next best is protected and next best is public. It's called encapsulation. That's the name of the topic, I guess. And what it means is like, you should always for best practice, try and be as you know, private as possible. So the thing is, when something's public, then the benefit is you can access it, you know, or access it easier. Um, whereas when something's public, the negatives is that you can accidentally change it and you might get unwanted things. Like if you made every variable in a class public and then some other class changed it, but actually you want to call a function when you change it because maybe uh, some other code needs to be run. Well, let's say for example, um, I, I don't know, you've got like, an ammo count, right? You got like, uh, you got like int ammo is equal to 10, right? Let's say you had that. And another script was accessing this. You wouldn't want them to accidentally be able to say like, oh yeah, uh, ammo uh, minus minus to reduce it. You would want them to call a function to reduce ammo because the problem is when you reduce ammo, maybe you want to do other things as well. It just makes sense to keep practically all of your variables private. Um, and then if you have, if you need to really get them, it's better to have a public function for it. Um, you would have more, I reckon a higher portion of your functions will be public than your variables. Um, one thing is if you've got a variable that you want to be private, but you're thinking, oh, but I need to set it in the inspector, then don't use public, use serialized field private. It does the same thing. It means it's private. So no other classes can access it. It's, it's, it's hidden, but we can access it in the inspector. Just like how, We've got hide in inspector for public things that need to be public, but you don't want to see an inspector because you don't want to accidentally change it. Um, but hide in inspector public is basically never used because you, you can always just use um, getter functions. So you would write like um, public and let's say 
let's get rid of this. So let's say we had a you know private integer x equals ten, and we wanted to get that. The the technically the best way to do it right public get x, and then just write uh, no parameters, and it's an integer type because it returns integer, and we just return x um, like that. So that basically just means when we call this instead. This is private, but we can still get the value. We just don't touch it directly. Um, and then the benefit of having it in a function is if we wanted to, we could expand it and have some more logic in here when we get the x. We might want to reduce one from x when we get it. I don't know. There'll be certain things you might want to do. Um, also, yes, you can write uh, getters and setters anyway and so on, but that's, that's a different kind of video. But this is private, public, protected. So as far as I'm aware, everyone knows what private and public is because they're the, they're the two you use all the time, right? If this test function is just called inside the script to do something, right? Let, let's say it like adds 10 to it, right? Yeah, I don't know why that'd be a function, but you get the point. Well, let's say it adds 10 and then divides by two, um, for example. So you would just say in the start method, maybe, um, whoops, in the start function, you would just say um, test one, call it, and you would do it, right? If you weren't ever calling this test one function from any other script in your game, then don't have it public. If you are, then public. And then if it's protected, what protected means is basically this derives from mono behavior. And if we go back to Unity and we create a C sharp script called like, um, well, it's bugged. Uh, so let's just say, what, what's going on there? Oh, it just the renaming just went weird. Okay, um, let's rename that to just um, child example. And just remember when you go into it now, uh, child example. All right. Now this script currently derives some mono behavior. So if we just uh, do this, back to where I started the other class. But instead, we're going to inherit from abstract example, which in turn does derive from mono behavior, but it goes through this class. It's like a tree. So. If I go here, okay, in abstract example, uh, sorry, in the child, I can access um, none of these functions because they're all private. Even though I derive from that class, they're private, right? So if I said um, test one, it's, it's not there, right? If, if I said x, the variable's not there. But if I said like um, public int x, right? Uh, let's just go into a private void do something. So in here, I can now use the x value because our parent has it, so we have it. But if it's private, it means that we can't access it in here. The x equals 10. No, we can't set it because x is inaccessible. It even tells you due to protection level. So what you can do is if you want something to be changed from the child, the, the, sorry, the children, but not other classes, right? This is a different class, but because it derives from it, it's like in the same part of the tree. So if we made this protected, it's protected as such from other classes, but if you derive from it, you can do stuff with it. So a lot of the time you'll use protected. Now, those are the differences between public, private, protected. Okay, I think I've explained that well enough. If you still don't get it, then be sure to mention that, but I think that's good enough. And then um, also you don't need to derive, you don't need to be using Unity because nothing in here, um, none of this code requires the Unity namespace. Some of this does, but because this uses it and this inherits, it's fine. Um, Abstract. So let's say this class is abstract. Okay, seemingly nothing happens. Um, so what what um, abstract means is that anything you write inside of it, um, by default, like it's treated the same. In, in reality, if it's abstract, and in this case in Unity, if it's a mono behavior, it means you cannot actually attach the script to anything because abstract means that. Um, it, it can't, you can't be something that's abstract, okay? So if, um, let's say you just had a class, it wasn't like a mono baby, let's just say you just had a class and it was stored some different data, right? Like maybe an image and a string and it's a number. If you had an abstract class of that, it means that you cannot actually have any of that specific one. We can't have an instance of abstract example because it's abstract. The How it works is it forces, um, you, you can force certain things. So for example, I might say, um, let me just get rid of this. So currently this is all green, right? No, no underlining, no red underlines. So if we say um, protected, cause it's just inside this uh, and it's child, 
protected um, abstract, again, abstract, void. So it's a function that returns nothing. And we'll call it, you know, do something. All right. Notice how if, you, if I put the squiggly brackets like you would for a function, it's going to give you red underline saying nope. Because um, if it's abstract, it can't have logic. Abstract, all it means is that you have to have it. So you actually end with a semicolon. And that just means that anything that derives from abstract example must have a function called do something. So I go here, it's telling me, oh, no, this isn't valid because it does not. Now you can just press that and it'll do it for you. Um, get rid of the, the throw new, that just will throw an error and pause your game basically. Um, so now we have to have this function. And what the benefit of that is, is we can have a list of abstract example and then we can have child example, child two example, child three example, and they all inherit. So if I call blah, 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 abstract example dot do something, it'll do different code here, like debug, hello, and then somewhere else it might add 10 to X. Like you can write completely separate logic. So the way I used it in my game, mainly, the main place I've used abstract, I have public abstract class and I had a um, status effect, right? Just, just like a status effect. And I would have a function for like, apply and on tick and on end. So for example, I can then make a class that derives from it called damage over time, and it would deal damage on each tick and it would have a damage type and so on. Um, anything in this abstract class is something that it shares. So for example, if it was damage over time, uh, they would all share, like I make it, well, I wouldn't make it public. Really you would make it private and have a constructor. So like um, if it's public abstract example, I'd have private integer ticks because it's a, um, well, first of all, it'd be protected because I would need to access it from below. Um, I might have ticks and then I might have a um, Protect, uh, protected string um, name and so on. You just have more, you know, protected bool is ticking. You wouldn't have that, but like, for example, you've got these things and this child can act, um, okay, so yeah, if you, um, you, you can still have functions in the child classes that don't exist in the parent, but you can't use override. Override means that, um, it quite literally just overrides what the original thing does. Now, if it's an abstract class, there's no logic in there, so whatever's here will be done. If you didn't have it abstract, if you just had a um, public virtual void do something, what virtual means um, is that virtual has to have a body, it doesn't have to have anything in it, but it has to have a body. Um, and it doesn't have to be in this child. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So what happens is, if it is in the child, it'll run the child code. So obviously it cannot change modifiers public. So I would have to write public here. And the point is I can write any code here. I can even write base dot uh, do something. And what that means is it will, wherever this line is, it'll execute all the code in here. So debug, I can't do debug dot local because it's uh, not mono behavior in unity engine anymore, but you get the point. Um, Virtual means that it can be overwritten or abstract. Abstract is more like a forced thing. You must overwrite this and do something to it. Virtual is like, you can if you want to, but this is here anyway. Now you might have some default logic here and you don't want to do any of it here. So you just don't write base dot do something. But if you did, if you had it, then you just do that basically. Um, so that's override, public, private, protected, abstract um, classes. What else? I guess the last thing, just something really quick to mention, it's not that useful, but people do use it, I guess, is uh, partial classes. So uh, if we just had like public partial class, abstract type example, and then we went here and wrote public partial class, abstract example. Um, we can't call it this because it already exists. So let's just write something else, right? Um, the point is we could make uh, this private now. So we've got these private things and the private function. And in here, we can actually go and write, um, notice how this is private and that's private and they're in different scripts, but they've got the same class name. And the reason why there's no problem is because I've wrote partial. It basically splits them up. So right now I can refer to name and it still exists because what it does is when, it, when uh, the compiler compiles all the code together it just adds these two scripts together whatever they're called in the um 
inspector doesn't really matter, I don't think, like in Unity, it doesn't matter. The point is they're both abstract classes with the same class name. So they are quite literally, all, all it would do at compile time is it'll just take this and cut it and put it at the bottom of here. Well, basically it'll just take any code out of here and combine it into like a main class, if you know what I mean. That's basically what it does. It's quite simple. Um, it's really just used for neatening things out and separating things. It's not actually going to give you any advantages in terms of performance or like comp like what your code can do. It's just a organization thing. Um, I've heard people use it generally for uh, interfaces. So if you had a script that had loads of interfaces, um, so like I this and I that and interface. I've done a video on interfaces before. What you can do is you can have the different implementations of those interfaces in the different partial classes so that it's nicely spread out. But it doesn't have to be. Um, there's no reason to do it. I just thought I'd mention it in case people wanted to know. It's just something you can know about. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this video. I just uh, hope you've learned something new about the different coding techniques with um, abstract and override and private and public and everything. Um, feel free to leave below suggestions for videos in the future. Um, but for now, thanks for watching and goodbye.